Hi guys and welcome to Mad X Stitcher on YouTube. There's a little bit different setup today as I'm sure you've probably noticed. I have no face cam and that's because I'm just in a different room of the house and I can't get my webcam out here but it's a little bit more comfortable so hopefully you can't hear what's going on outside. I am mic'd up so I guess I'll know when I get to editing this video but today I want to go ahead and talk about this stuff right here, variegated floss, uh, color changing floss, over dyed floss. This is what I want to talk about because it is a question I actually do get from time to time is how do you use this? Which may seem like a really odd question if you've been stitching for a while, but the thing about embroidery and even knitting and crochet and pretty much any craft that's been around longer than dirt is that there's a lot of things to it that just seem like common knowledge, but the problem with common knowledge is that it's really not common. You've got new people coming in every day who are just starting to learn it. They don't know all the little hidden secrets, and variegated floss is one of those little hidden secrets. We are just going to use two strands and we're going to line them up as best we can. So there we go. And just to make things a little bit easier on myself, I am going to tie just a tiny little knot right here on the end of my thread. And that's just going to keep it to where it's mostly going to stay lined up. So we are all threaded up and I'm going to start from the bottom just because that's mostly how I like to start. And let's see if I can actually find where I need to be. That's a good place. Uh, we'll go up a few. So I have more room later on. It's about right here. And typically what you want to do when you are stitching, and let's see if I can do this on the back. I can't turn this over. This stand is not the best. Uh, after a little bit of research, I learned that I probably should have gone with the cheaper one, but that's neither here nor there. So typically what you want to do when you are doing anything with your variegated floss. And I say typically because not always this is what you want to do, but typically you want to complete one stitch at a time, just like this. And like any other kind of cross stitch, and I think I'm wiggling around a little bit more than I anticipated. You always want to make sure that your stitches go the same way both times. So there's the first arm there's the second arm. There's the first arm. There we go. And there's the second arm. And of course they would choose to do yard work right when I start recording. Awesome. Okay, and here's another question that I actually do tend to get from time to time is what to do with your rows. Do you do the entire row and then go back to the beginning? Uh, well, you can actually, if you want. It will use up a little bit more floss. I just like to go down to the very next row and then go backwards just a little bit and just kind of go back and forth. Uh, I think where the confusion comes from is probably people who are used to stitching half a row and then going back over it which I'll show you what that means once I've done this. But already here you can start, start to see the color change. Yeah, let's go down here. And here we go. Ah, yeah. So you can already start to see the color changing and how the blue just blends very nicely into the yellow. And I'll probably do about three or four rows of this just to really give you an idea. So here we go. I've got three rows done and that's just enough to really see what's going on. You've got the very easy transitions between the blue and the yellow and there's only a little bit of mixing on the edges where the floss doesn't quite line up. Let's go ahead and see if I can find it. There we go. And that'll happen. Uh, the longer you cut your floss, the more likely it is that it will stop being lined up later on, but that's fine for now. We're not really too worried about that. 
But like I said, this is the way you want to do it the majority of the time, but there are other ways you can do it as well. Uh, for instance, I'll just go ahead here and show you what happens when you do a row of half stitches and then go back. And that's where you do it like this. So we've got one half stitch, one half stitch here. Okay, and here we go. We've got the end of the row. So now we're going to start going back. And you can see there's a little bit of yellow there, but we're going to start running into problems really soon. And I'll show you what we mean here. Where are we at? I'm tangled up on something underneath, I think, with all these wires everywhere. So for these first few stitches, it's going to look like it does up in the first example, because the yellow is all going to stay lined up with one another. Okay, lost the video there for a second, but here we can see that the yellow is starting to overlap with this little bit of green, and now it's going to go over this little bit of blue. And pretty soon we're running out of yellow, so we're going to start getting into the red stuff. And you can only see the vague hint of the blue underneath. You can't really see it that much. And I'm not railroading my stitches like I probably should be, but you'd be able to see the blue even less if I were. And I might do something on railroading maybe in a bit if people want to see that, but you can see a little bit there, there's the blue and the yellow, so now we're going to go for the second row. And almost immediately, we're starting in on the red. So I'm going to go ahead and do these next two rows so that we can see what both of these methods look like side by side. And here we go, we're just finishing up this last row now. And you can kind of see how you've got some patches of very solid color and then other patches where, whoops, there's that little bit of an overlap. I keep getting caught on these things underneath. And that's going to change drastically depending on the size and the shape of whatever it is that you're stitching. So I'm only doing like 12 stitches across or something right here, but you can see that there's a lot of yellow, pretty much all of the red is overlapped. You can't even see the little bit of yellow underneath there. You can see a little bit of the overlap here. There isn't really a whole lot of blending, but for the most part, it is all solid. There's a little bit of blending, and this might actually be what you're going for. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I always like to say that there is no right or wrong way to do this kind of thing. It just all depends on what you want. So the next thing I'm going to show you then is the way I like to do it in most of the stuff that I've been doing lately. Uh, for the little two color kits that I uh, sell, I recommend doing it this way because a lot of times they're designed specifically for those color changes. But I've also got the needlepoint kits that I've been working on and I'm going to show you how I recommend doing those. And that is, let's put the needle right there. So we've got all of our floss here and we're going to take one strand off if I can get to it. There we go. And I'm going to do what most people will probably tell you not to do with your variegated floss and I'm going to fold it over just like this so that we have mixed colors like this. And just kind of do the start this way. And this, if you're not familiar, is called a loop start. Don't fall off the needle. So we're just going to slide it right into that loop. Pull it through so that it's tight on the fabric. And then put it through just like that. And I'm very sorry for the wobbly camera. I will try to stabilize this a little bit better next time. I thought this would work a bit better than it is. But I'm gonna stitch the same way I did the first time. And here we've got a little bit of the color lining up. 
but that's actually going to be quite rare in the long run of things. That's just where it happened to overlap. And sometimes for things that like call for six strands or something like the needlepoint kits that I have been working on, I will just uh, cut my skein of floss in a particular way and I'll probably do a video on how I like to do those specifically. And I just pick up six random pieces of thread from the whole big mess. I don't know how many stitches across I did, I wasn't counting, but it doesn't really matter. But a lot of those needlepoint designs that I've been working on have been kind of designed with this blended method in mind instead. Got the viewfinder over here, but I'm trying to look around the camera because it's a little bit easier. But here we can see now there's a little bit of yellow in with the blue. There we go. And I wouldn't typically use this sort of floss with the really bright differences to do the blended method. Typically for this, I would use something that has, say, variations of green or orange or blue or something, all the same color, just different shades. Uh, and it just gives you a really nice kind of blended look to it. But in this case, we're going to get something a little bit more psychedelic, I think. There we go, pop through. I'm losing tension on my fabric, that's fine, whatever. And now, pretty soon, we're also going to start getting into the red. I'm really having to look around the camera, and I'm getting into my own light, so I'm sorry about that. I'll probably have to do a multi-light setup next time, just to make sure this isn't happening as much. So... Here we go, I'm just going to go down to the next one. This is fine, you get the idea of what's going on. Focus a little bit better, please. There we go. And here we go, we're just finishing off this last little row. And you can see in here that instead of just the red and blue and yellow, suddenly there's some more greens and oranges in here that weren't quite there before, just from the blending of the floss. And it blends a little bit better this way than it did over here. Just because you've got the, you've got both of the colors on top as well as on the bottom. Not paying a whole lot of attention to what I'm doing. There we go. But this is the way, like I said, that I like to do for the needlepoint kits. Typically, I do stitch the first way, though, where I do an entire full stitch before working or moving over to the next one. Here we go. One more stitch. And there we go. So, ha. So there it is. Uh, three fairly common different ways to use the variegated floss. There are other ways to use it as well. And like I said at the beginning of this video, there's no right or wrong way to do it. However you want to do it is the right way to do it. I'm ne I've never really been a fan of the attitude that if you're going to be doing this crafty, creative thing that there's this one right way to do it, and if you're doing it this other way, it's totally wrong. So, there you go. Three different ways to use the variegated floss. Uh, there are other ways to use it, of course, as well, but these are the ways that I see the most often out there. So, so hopefully that answers any questions that people may have had about this, and like I said, it's one of those things that you can't 
tend to find a whole lot of information on just because it's assumed to be common knowledge. So I'm probably going to be doing maybe a small series, maybe a big series on things like this that are common knowledge, but you can't really find any knowledge on it because everyone assumes that everyone already knows, which is always something that really kind of bugs me about some of these crafts. But hopefully these videos help. If you have any questions about this technique or any other techniques that you're having trouble finding any information about, go ahead and please put them in the comments down below and I will answer them the best I can. I may even do a video on them if they seem involved enough to need one. But that's all for today and I will see you next time.